Scott Braun does a great job at MLB Network. He's actually going to host their 30 clubs in 30 days live from the Twins, the O's, the Pirates, the Rays. Uh, camps beginning tomorrow, Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern time. Of course, check out MLBnetwork.com for your local channel listings. He's kind enough to join us on a Wednesday. Scott, how you doing, bud? Rich, I'm great. I escaped the cold just in time, like uh, literally just in time. I hit the last light out last night. Where are you right now? What what part of uh, Florida are you out of? I'm in Fort Myers, so we'll head to Twins Camp tomorrow morning, and we'll talk to Joe Maurer and Byron Buxton and B- Brian Dozier and all the stars there. That's going to be a good team, actually. Yeah, let, let's start with that team. Uh, last year, I think, kind of exceeding expectations. They get the one-game playoff. Uh, that's a team I thought the pitching really came into their own because you look at their road record. They, they, they showed you they were capable of winning a ton of games on the road with that young staff. I mean, when you look at the Central this year, it was last year a mirage for the Twins, or do you still think it's a Cleveland Indians division to win? I think it's definitely the Indians division to win, and I think that the Twins are going to give them a little bit of a run this year. I think they're definitely the second-best team in Minnesota, and they made quite a turnaround last year, too. I mean, the year before, they lost 103 games, and then they made it to the wild card last year with 85 wins. So I think the team got not just stronger, much stronger. And Cleveland got a drop weaker, I think. The bullpen took a hit. They lost Brian Shaw, who some people say counts as two relievers there. Carlos Santana, their first baseman. The Twins didn't lose anyone, and they just got stronger with Lance Lynn, Logan Morrison, Jake Odorizzi, Fernando Rodney in the bullpen, along with Addison Reed. So they, their payroll is higher than it's ever been. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Twins are giving the Indians a run for the division the entire year. And also, I expect them to make the playoffs, if not, as a wild card. Uh, how much of a loss is it with Polanco, where they lose their uh, shortstop? It's definitely a loss, and he was great down the stretch for them. Last two months of the season, he was really good. He's a short glove, but I think they'll be able to counter it with, I want to see them call up Nick Gordon, former first-round pick for them. I'm not sure if they're ready to do that, but they can move guys around like Eduardo Escobar. So I think the offense was really good last year. And even without Polacco, who was a hot bat for them down the stretch, I think they'll still be really good. I mean, Byron Buxton, I think, is going to take the next step. Brian Dozier is a great bat. Joe Maurer had a bounce back year. So you go top to bottom. It's a, it's a really strong offensive team. I had worries about the pitching. And then once they put Lynn into that rotation, I think they completed it. Uh, w- Gordon was in uh, double-A ball last year, correct? Yeah, he was. And he's speedy. He can handle the shortstop position. Son of Tom, obviously. Uh, half-brother of D, but I think he can be, I mean, there's been comparisons of a J.J. Hardy, a Steven Drew, that kind of player. So not the biggest bat, but a lot of speed and a short glove over at shortstop. So I don't know if they're ready yet for him, but regardless, I think, I mean, hey, if things don't go well for the first few weeks and they feel, and he's killing it in AAA, they'll bring him up. They yeah. should. It's their year. Yeah, and it's a good point. And I know the one, the only thing I remember about Gordon, and, uh, and just quickly off the top of my head is, I think they want to see him develop a little more patience at the plate. I mean, I, I guess double-A, different pitching, obviously, but struck out a ton of times last year. But, again, he's still a young player. He's 21. So, again, patience at the plate certainly comes. But you mentioned the threat of being on the base paths. I mean, how many teams that we've seen over the last several years win with small ball? I mean, so it could fit exactly what Minnesota's looking to do. Yeah, there's almost no teams that run anymore. So it's it's a commodity to have somebody that can steal bags. So and it's great to have at the top of the order. I mean, yeah, we're we're in an era where it's all about home runs. Obviously, the word launch angle is used quite a bit. And actually, look for pitchers to counter that because you used to say just keep the ball low in the zone and you're all good. But everyone's changing their swing to have more of an uppercut. So now the best pitch in baseball this year is going to be a four-seamer up in the zone, an elevated fastball. So, actually, that's why I really like someone like Lance Lynn this year. He's been doing that for years. That's his strikeout pitch. So, I think that that's the way to counter some of this stuff. But overall, I mean, I really do like the Twins. I got to say, I mean, I was worried that they were going to take a step back if they didn't do significant damage in the offseason. And they're top three for sure in terms of uh, teams that really did a lot, made a lot of moves. I think the Angels are up there, too, for me. Uh, what did you make of the Alex Cobb signing with Baltimore? I mean, it, I know it's been multiple reports. Uh, I guess he still has to uh, pass that physical. I was a little surprised. It's it's, it's a four-year contract. I mean, I know he's, that career year for Tampa, it's uh, coming back with that Tommy John surgery uh, sideline and mostly uh, for the last uh, couple seasons. But, again, um, you know, that's a lot of money. Four years, $60 million. Uh, so when you look at it and you look at the top free agents, Rich, most of them actually got what uh, the experts predicted they would get. There was probably two or three players that fell well short. Lance Lynn's definitely one of them. 
and Mike Moustakis for sure. Maybe oh, Logan no Morrison doubt. could go on that <laughs> list. But but look at look at the guys who did get paid. Lorenzo Cain still got eighty million dollars. Alex Cobb is going to get fifty six to sixty million dollars. Eric Hosmer got a ton of money. Um, so there are plenty of players at the top of the class that got paid. You Darvish. So. When it comes to Alex Cobb, I got to give him credit. I mean, how I don't see a ton of differences in terms of overall production and value between Cobb and Lynn. Lynn signed a one year deal that's 12 to 14 million, and Cobb somehow gets four years 60. So I got to give him credit. I mean, the Orioles were in a spot where they desperately need starting pitching. They still want to contend. That division, I still don't think they can keep up with the Yankees and the Red Sox, but they had no chance that they didn't have at least one more starter. So I think the Orioles got desperate. It got to a time period where they said, hey, if we wait two, three more weeks, from now, Alex Cobb's not coming back for the first month of the season because pitchers have to get ready. So right. as it is, he's probably going to miss at least the first week, week and a half. So I actually like Lynn better than Cobb. So that's, again, why I'm pointing to the Twins. And I'll tell them tomorrow when I get there what a, what a great job they did. But I still think Cobb's a great pitcher. Changeup didn't come around for him last year coming off Tommy John surgery, and that's his bread and butter. So I just want to make sure that pitch is back in full gear this season before I'm fully trusting him as, say, a number three, maybe two starter at the t- at the uh, highest level. Uh, when you look at the AO East quickly and handicap the AO East with the, the Red Sox and the Yankees, one, two, and we saw the moves that they made, uh, the Red Sox with Martinez, obviously the Yankees making their splash with Stan, but now you have two new uh, young managers in there in Cora and Booney, and I'm wondering what guy has more pressure on him? I would say they're pretty close. I would say... Maybe Aaron Boone, just given the fact that Joe Girardi had been there for a really long time, and I know there were definitely people in New York that weren't pleased with the results there because I know Joe had only won one time during his tenure, and for Yankees fans, that's like basically being a loser if you only win one time in 10 years. But uh, I I think Booney coming also from television. I mean, he hadn't coached at all. Alex Cora, at least last year, was the bench coach for the Houston Astros. I think they're both going to be fine and do well. I do have the Red Sox one and the Yankees two in my mind as of right now because of J.D. Martinez uh, filling that void that they had last year with no David Ortiz. And Mm -hmm. also just a lot of their players had down offensive seasons. So I think the pressure will be more on Booney because I can see the Yankees taking a slight step back uh, this season. Still being a wild card team, but I do think a lot of things did click their way last year, um, especially in terms of starting pitching, too. Who knows what you'll get again from CC Sabathia? Yep. Will Tanaka's elbow hold up? Stuff like that. So I think Booney will have a drop more pressure. Uh, 1242 on a Wednesday. Rich Canyon is here. Scott Braun, kind enough to join us on the Boardwalk Kind of Hotline. He's going to host MLB Network's 30 Clubs in 30 Days live uh, from the Twins, the O's, the Pirates, the Rays. All camps beginning tomorrow, Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Visit MLBnetwork.com for your local channel listings. Uh, Scott, let's uh, go back to the NL and uh, talk about the Phils in our backyard for a moment. I, I kind of was preaching in a choir with the Arietta move. And we had Scott Profrock on so many times, assistant GM, and I kept kind of, I, I, it's not that I was grilling him, but my point was, listen, you can't rely on young arms coming up from the farm system, and you can't stand pat with the starting rotation. So what do they do? They go out, and it actually turns out, like, it, it, it's it's really a genius move now with Eichhoff and his injury, but how about the Arietta move? And I thought they played it perfectly because they, when they met in the offseason with Boris, they did not want to offer him a longer-term deal. I'm okay with the deal, even if it was uh, three or four years. It turns out it's four, but I'm okay with that and the money because now you have a bona fide ace to go with an Aaron Nola. Well, and it's going to be three years, right? So yes. three years, or it could be two, or it could be five. Five, yes. Right? So, yeah. So, and I mean, I think realistically, I don't think it's going to go to five just based on how teams look at the aging curve in Major League Baseball nowadays. And the velocity numbers have gone down for Jake. Um, I still like him a lot as a pitcher. I don't know if I like him on a five-year deal. And I don't think the Phillies like him either in that way. So either Jake dominates and looks like, the old Jake, or even, I mean, even if he's last year's Jake, maybe he opts out after those two years. I think the Phillies are fine with that. They want to get a couple seasons out of him. They can spend their money elsewhere. Uh, The maximum, I think, for them will be three years, $75 million. I think it's a very fair deal for a guy that not only will be the best or second best in the rotation with him and Nola, but I agree with you. I mean, you look at the rotation, there's so many unknowns, not just injury-wise with someone with like Velasquez, but also just performance-wise, you don't know how many innings you're going to get. And they need someone to set the tone. It's too much pressure on Aaron Nola. Somebody that's going to come into camp, he's a workout warrior. He's right in the Gabe Kapler mode. Workout warrior, cares about what he puts in his body, does everything the right way on a daily basis at the ballpark, serious gamer competitor, 
So I think it's a perfect fit for the Phillies. I was with you. Once it seemed like most of the big market teams weren't going to go down that route for Arietta, I was like, Phillies are perfect. They have so much money to spend, and they need a guy like this. And they'll still have plenty to go next year. They'll circle plenty of guys with that epic free agent class. So this makes a lot of sense. Phillies are going to be a decent team. I wouldn't be shocked if they're a wild card. That's definitely the ultimate feeling for them. But I I could see them being a 500 squad this year. I think the fact that they went out and they make the move for Santana, they add to their line up you still have Hoskins you got some young players as well with Altier and Herrera and Franco you've got a young nucleus good infield as well defensively and then you go and you spend the money that they spend on Arietta. that tells me that they believe they're trying I, I, I don't want to say go all in right now but we're not just going to be competitive we're going to contend as you alluded to for that second wild card spot let, let me ask you this in regards to Kapler we've had so many baseball guys come on and it seems as though there's there's mixed reviews on this guy there's well you know what it might be a little unorthodox and philly fans are going to get frustrated or yeah you know what wait and see what he does it's the analytics and the saber metrics and the outside the box thinking and it's going to be a fun ride uh for phillies fans i mean where do you (laughs) what side do you lean on here I'm definitely a fan, and I'll tell you why. I think this is the perfect team for someone like Gabe Kapler, who is unique. He's unlike anyone else. Sometimes some of the guys might not be as in on, say, the meditation and some of the confidence talks that they have where, you know, it can get to be a little too much at times, but I think he'll know when to scale it back and when to push it. As far as, say, analytics, many of the new age managers are all in on that stuff. I mean, Cora knows all about that. Yep. Boone knows all about that. All the guys we're talking about. I mean, he, he likes weighted runs created plus. It's basically just a stat to measure overall offensive performance. And also he likes fielding independent pitching uh, for the pitching side. And that just kind of measures the future as opposed to what he says ERA is more looking at what just happened. So these are stats that are actually being used in baseball by front offices and even by us on our shows for many years. So it's just that we've had so many old school managers. So as far as stats, I'm good. As far as veteran coaches around him, I'm great. He's got John Maley around who comes from the Cubs. Robbie Thompson's been doing his job for a long time. He's going to be the bench coach. So you have the veterans there. Larry Bowe is still all over camp. I love Larry. So as, as far as veterans, they're good. And then as, as far as Gabe being forward thinking with the team and being a motivator, I like I like everything he brings to the table. It seems like right now the guys respect him. Some of the stuff might be silly, that's fine, but a social media contest in spring training, that's all good. Like, that's a good way to connect with the guys. So uh, I think he's going to be just fine. I mean, I think that he knows, too. He played the game. He'll have to adjust. If, they're, if the players feel like it's too much on an everyday basis, Gabe will scale it back. Like, he's not a dumb guy. So I think he's going to be just fine. This is the perfect group, though because they're all green. It's a young group. So if he was coming into a veteran team and saying, hey, we're switching everything, it would be different. But these guys are going to grow with him. So I think I think the Phillies made a good move. It's, it's risky, yes, but I think it's high reward. Uh, two more before I let you get out of here. Mets starting rotation. Yep. You know, Mickey Calloway, it's his job to really manage that pitching staff. And when you look at it across the board with DeGrom and Syndergaard and Vargas dealing with his issues and Mats and then Harvey, who a lot of people are hoping maybe this is his year where he can put it all together. And then Wheeler, uh, even Montero. Uh, I mean, heck, you can even go all the way down to uh, Gazelman as well. Um, what would be the realistic expectations? I mean, first and foremost, hopefully they get through the season healthy. But I mean, do you think this this rotation can carry them into the playoffs or at least be competitive in the NL East? Oh, production-wise, no doubt about it. It's just a matter of if they're going to stay on the field. That's the problem for them. It's always the problem for them. So, I mean, as far as if you're getting 30-plus starts out of Syndergaard to Grom, a bounce back from – I mean, and you have options. A bounce back from either Harvey, Matt, mm-hmm. Wheeler takes the next step coming off injuries. The talent is so there. It's been there. You know what's crazy? So we could, for the first time to start the season, have Syndergaard to Grom, Harvey, Matt, Wheeler – go one through five, a turn in the rotation for the first time ever. And we've Mm -hmm. been talking about these guys for such a long time (laughs) because Jason Vargas is hurt. So I think they go as far as the pitching goes. I think the offense will be average. I think the defense will be below average, but that's actually a huge upgrade from last year. Last year, defensively, they were the worst team I saw in Major League Baseball. So I think just having the young Rosario there, who's a great glove, once he gets through some of the growing pains, he'll be good. Frazier's solid at third base. As Drupal Cabrera, I like better at second base. Uh, Outfield-wise, Cespedes is good in left. If Lagares is playing, he's actually really strong in center. Bruce is fine in right. So defensively, I think they have the chance, I guess, to be average. And then offensively, I think average. I think there's still a little too much swing and miss in there. There's some power. So I think the ceiling for the Mets 
is a wild card spot. I don't think they can contend with the Washington Nationals. I think the Nats are just so much stronger than everyone else. So if everything goes right as far as pitching being healthy, the Mets are a wild card. But the difference between the Mets being a wild card and everyone else is that you don't want to face Syndergaard no, in the ground, not no. only in a wild card yep. game, but then four times in a five game series. So yeah. you'd be in a lot of trouble. So they can be dangerous if they get through the season. That's a great point. And also, too, you, you, the consistency and the health of Cespedes because he's got to carry that offense. Um, yep. Give me, before I let you get out of here, I've got a minute to go. Give me two to three storylines um, that you guys are really keying on. Uh, for this season, like something you're focused on, something where you mentioned like a Twins team last year kind of came out of nowhere. But where, uh, give me something uh, like a little teaser. What do you guys really, even yourself personally, what are you looking forward to this season? I mean, is there a player, is there a team, is there a manager that you can say, hey, you know what, watch out for this team or this guy? Yeah, I mean, obviously for our for this division purposes, seeing if the Nationals get over the hump after the first round of the postseason, can they get past that round? But actually here, so for opening, this is a good way to put it, for opening day, opening week and all that, these are the two storylines, aside from teams that are going to surprise, because we do have some powerhouse clubs that we know are going to be good. I'll give you two things. One, Shohei Otani. Yep. Can we have a two-way player? Because right now he's struggling immensely in spring training. It just looks like he needs more reps. I think he can do it. I just think he, he probably needs minor league time. So I don't know if they're going to go that route. Or do they just have him pitch? Because I think pitching-wise, he'd be fine. And then rule changes. Mm-hmm. How is it going to work with just six timeouts to go to the mound? Because, I mean, last year especially, it just got out of hand with catchers every other batter going to the mound to have a coffee talk with the pitcher. <laughs> so those are the two things that I'm paying attention to by far. I'm a progressive millennial, so I want to see the game moving. And I think this is the right step. Uh, to do that. So this is step one. There'll probably be more in the future like a pitch clock, but just the timeouts alone, I'm telling you, is going to make a difference because the catcher can't call timeout every five seconds. That's true. But you know what? I'm a little more old school in that approach. I mean, to me, I don't mind. Even when I used to cover baseball a lot and I used to have to write raps, it's horrible covering a Yanks and Red Sox game because it would go on for five hours. But I don't mind. And I enjoyed the World Series going into the extras in the game uh, uh, taking as long as it did. But you're right. I mean, after a while, you do... You almost say to yourself, hey, enough is enough. <laughs> That's right. So. And it's for the kids, too. The younger generation. I know. Whenever, whenever that happens, or a pitching coach. When a pitching coach is taking his time going out to the mound, then everyone else is what? Buried in their phones. They might look away. That's I mean, true. you're losing the attention. It's just there's no action there. Yeah. So I'm just like, guys, you have every half inning to figure it out. Prep before the game. Prep in between innings. When you're on the field, play baseball. Hey, good That's point. Right good point to close it out. Scott, great stuff, pal. We definitely look forward to uh, seeing you on MLB Network. And don't forget, he'll be hosting 30 Clubs in 30 Days. Twins, O's, Pirates, Rays camp beginning tomorrow, Thursday, 10 p.m. Visit MLBnetwork.com for local channel listings and the lineup and everything on the MLB Network. Enjoy the uh, warm weather. We'll certainly talk during the season, pal. I'll do my best. Yeah, let's talk soon, Rich. Thanks All a lot. Right. You got it. Be well. Scott Braun, good stuff for him. A lot of stuff to uh, digest and absorb. Really good stuff.